Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan, an open source researcher and alchemist and a student of the inventor and Vortex Fusion specialist, Malcolm Bendel. Today's video is the second part in what I'm calling the Miami Plasmoid Road Trip series. Uh, it's with myself, uh, interviewed by our MC for the week, Susan Devlin. And there's plenty more of these interviews to come. Uh, next up, we've got Sheila Rahman. We've also got Brad Young telling his story of how things developed and his involvement. And we've also got Kieran Swords, Lance and Jones and Roger Green talking more on the business side of things. So keep an eye out for those. I've also got some other footage uh, from that Florida trip as well with the inventor Ed Grimm. And there's another few little videos of bonus footage and little experiments we were just playing around with and stuff like that. So keep an eye out. Plenty more to come. I'm going to be posting all of these over the next few weeks, and then there'll be more. So good afternoon. Uh, we're here in Miami, and we're talking about the topic of Malcolm Bendel's thunderstorm generator. So I have here with me Jordan Collins who has been working with Malcolm for the last year and a half, looking at his technology, studying his technology, and actually working with the man uh, directly. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, you want to give us a little more on your background and how you came to this? Yeah, so I was actually an organic farmer a few years ago, and for various reasons that started to be difficult to uh, to trade and continue with that business. But in the meantime, while I was doing that and why I got into farming and being on the land and being by myself is I love to read, listen to audiobooks. I've always been interested in academic fields but never fit into a university environment or found any particular subject that I find important enough to study. So I was kind of uh, taught by internet archive, you know, just uh, reading books mainly from experimenters from the 1800s and much older stuff. Uh, alchemy, I studied uh, a lot of the Vedic texts and scriptures Great. about yeah, both the technology and the mathematics in that. Um, then I, I came across the work of a guy called Marco Roden, who's a, a, ma a mathematician, um, vortex-based mathematics, and mm -hmm. started replicating some of Nikola Tesla's uh, inventions like his radiant energy device. So I was doing a lot of practical experimentation, wow. both chemical and electrical. Um, and, and this all essentially led me into finding the work of Malcolm Bendel uh, when Randall announced it on the Joe Rogan show a few years ago, along with everyone else, I think. Um, and from that point, all of these various different things that I've been studying and experimenting, experimenting with and trying to figure out, uh, they all kind of just led to Malcolm's work. Uh, and it wow. was primarily the theory that he was talking about, this, uh, his plasmoid unification model and uh, octave dimensional model, understanding the world from the perspective of, of, of sound, music, and geometry. So bringing back these fundamental principles that we, you know, we compartmentalize so many things in science these days. Yes. Uh, yes. And there's so many different fields you can study, but I thought, oh, this is it. This is fundamentally <laughs> what is behind everything else is frequency and geometry, essentially. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I took that really seriously and started, I've got a, a YouTube channel, Alchemical Science. Yes. Um, and so I started just covering a little bit of Malcolm Mendel's work. And then Marco, this mathematician, uh, he ended up putting me in touch with Malcolm Bendel, he was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm friends with this guy. I, I, I can put you in touch with him because I said your work is completely cohesive. You know, the mathematics you're using, he's using that for technology. Um, and so, yeah, he put me in touch with Malcolm uh, and I started to just, Malcolm was very encouraging of what I was doing, really took a lot of time. We, you know, we called each other every day for uh, over like the last year and a half, pretty much. Um, wow. And he gave me a lot of just individual lessons. I really just wanted to learn from him specifically because yeah. I, yeah, I take on these teachers outside mm -hmm. um, of the system. You know, Malcolm's been that, Marco has been that, uh, Ed Nightingale, Bob Greenia, who uh, you were speaking to earlier, uh, all teachers who have tried to study their work very specifically because it yes. comes back to these fundamental 
principles that we can both use for technology and to better understand just what the world is, how it, how it works, how the planets move, uh, you know, where, where is our place in the universe. So I yeah. kind of saw all of this in Malcolm's work, yes. rather than initially even being attracted by the technology, but just the, the science behind it and all the different spheres that that can revolutionize at the same time. Amazing. So yeah, and I've seen your, your videos. And you are definitely my, I, I just was enthralled and you have such a great way of explaining it um, and putting it all together. And uh, so greatly appreciated. Thanks. And also to learn that you, you have studied uh, some spiritual studies, the Vedic hymns and or the Vedic documents and things like that, as well as yeah. I didn't know you actually did some hands-on uh, experiments as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and all of that really tied together you know if we read the history of India uh -huh. uh, a lot of things have been just completely written out of, of the Western paradigm you know we say oh the Greeks invented this or they came up with this and we can find this 2,000 years ago in mm -hmm. the Indian history and you know what we kind of call scriptures are their history books their uh, and their scientific treaties as well you know we've got the Gandharva Veda which is the study of music and rhythm um, mm. We have Jyotish, which is the, the study of astronomy and astrology. And so many of the ideas that we've kind of re come up with, and we have various people claiming, you know, I came up with that, or they discovered that. They were already there in that culture. And that kind of gave me that original wow. vision to understand that there's a lot that we don't know. And so mm -hmm. the, the numbers that Malcolm uses, because I know I've mentioned mathematics several times. Yeah. Um, the theory of mathematics that Malcolm propounds and has studied and Marco Roden uh, he calls it vortex based maths Malcolm calls it Vedic maths um, to give yeah because this is these are the oldest kind of texts that we can find that reference these numbers very very specifically uh, but we find them used all over the world uh, so this is what to give some context Malcolm's using to design his devices so mm -hmm. the the thunderstorm generator also future technologies like the uh, direct matter to energy drive or implosive turbine so all of these implosive devices he's using this multi-dimensional system of mathematics mm -hmm. and it appears that we've lost the understanding of what numbers yes. actually are today so it's like right. a, you know a language we can say some things in english that take so many words but if we go back to a language like sanskrit or hebrew often they have a very specific word you know many words for love many words for yeah yeah. for scientific thought or there's just it's a lot more precise and so that's kind of what we've done with maths now is that we're writing increasingly complex equations and right. coming up devising fantastic ways to understand things like I'm not criticizing it but numbers are a more ancient symbolic language than this that can be used to objectively map the world in ways that we currently don't understand so right. for example Malcolm's spheres here you can see mm -hmm. up there but th these are actually nested so there's another sphere inside that another mm -hmm. sphere inside that um, and th these are at the ratio of four to three to two um, mm -hmm. the transitions on the pipes here are 51.84 degrees mm -hmm. and 432 <laughs> most people have heard of you know it's it was the old tuning standard yeah uh, for yeah, a lot of different cultures. Uh, it's also the root radius of the sun, so 432,000 miles. There's a lot more to that, but you can see it's being used in different ways. Um, it's also the, the, the uh, 432,000 years in Kali Yuga, the Vedic yeah. cycle of time. So we can see it being used for time measurement ratios. Um, and that's what Malcolm has found, essentially, right. uh, or rediscovered amongst others. Randall Carlson's also been... Mm -hmm. uh, working with these numbers a lot and finding them embedded, encoded in ancient structures. So, you know, the, the Giza complex, uh, yeah, various different ancient structures all over the world, uh, also in a lot of ancient calendars. And yeah, essentially these numbers are very special. Um, and I see them as if we can understand these principles, and there is a lot more to understand there, then we can really understand universe from the perspective of, of music of this being you know universe one verse in yeah. a greater song yeah. um, and that it all works on harmonic principles like uh, everything is in harmony as above so below uh, yeah. yeah 
I love what you said about, um, because it's really interesting, because I looked at the numbers too, and I've seen you know, the, the charts and everything, and it's like, wow, how do you even describe that to, to somebody, how these numbers are relating? And you said it so well, you said it's like a language. Hmm. And we kind of, I guess, used it as like an abacus or to, how, to count things and yeah. to compute on them rather than seeing the actual, if you will, encoded message in the numbers. That's exactly right. Like, uh, you know, I can't remember whether it was Marco or Malcolm who said it, but, you know, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like this is the a man's way to count his pennies, essentially. Yeah, yeah. You know, like <laughs> this is not how, it's not the real use of numbers, ultimately. Right. Um, yeah, numbers are real and alive. We can just see so many insane synchronicities from thousands of reference points at this point. You know, going from the Vedic scriptures to the, uh, the Sumerian culture, to the Egyptian calendars, to the Mayan calendar. Uh, it, it's all in there. This system based on doubling and tripling, mm -hmm. essentially, uh, which is how I believe Pythagoras uh, came up with, you know, rediscovered the, the Western musical scale. So these are all notes, and that's a lot of the most important part of Malcolm's work is essentially just understanding how things resonate. Um, right. How, yeah, this uh, octave sequence. So uh -huh. how things work in octaves, in perfect fifths, perfect fourths. It's exploring uh -huh. yeah, physics through the lens of sound using mathematics as a precise language to show us how all these things interrelate. Um, and, you know, that comes down to things as specific as we can see through just three numbers we can understand whether they're imploding or exploding like we can mm -hmm. use this for engineering in the future uh, and i dare say that this is how a lot of advanced engineering was done in in the, the past. past yeah yeah because yeah. what it, once we understand how harmonics work once we understand that this is musical that everything resonates and that frequency and geometry is other, they, these are the fundamental principles to work with, then we can just apply this to absolutely all fields of science and art, have an industrial revolution and a, an artistic renaissance at the same time. Sounds brilliant. I think we're all ready for that. Yeah. And most definitely. So as far as you've been working directly with Malcolm, um, the man himself, who's just a, you know, got to meet him myself, he's incredible. Um, is there anything you want to relay that um, <clears throat> just having your experience working with him and through and, and obviously he's been a great mentor which is amazing he seems to want to share this information broadly yeah Malcolm's had a huge focus on education and he mm -hmm. took me on you know with no scientific background I'm not necessarily the most convincing person to the spheres that need to understand this to roll this out in a big way um, and yet he, he's taken a lot of time for me to explain yeah. this. Um, and it is primarily, you know, I think this is the brilliance of this invention, the thunderstorm generator, is he's come out with a, a technology that's not destabilizing. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it actually allows the use of the combustion engine for many years to come, mm -hmm. uh, extends the life of all of our infrastructure. And that's important both for the consumers uh, being, you know, if you think of somewhere like India that has millions of tuk-tuks, small vehicles, People can't just go and buy an electric car, even exactly. if it's cheap, even if we bring the price down a lot, that's a lot of infrastructure to replace. Um, right. And so this is a retrofit for the internal combustion engine. It can both help service the engine, clean out the carbon, mm -hmm. make it last longer, increase the fuel efficiency, and also solve the pollution problem. Get rid of the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, stuff that is truly poisoning, yeah. you know, particularly a lot of the third world cities it's debatable whether we need more carbon in the air over here but regardless it also breaks that control narrative that's going on exactly in that sense but it also works for obviously uh the guys selling the gas and oil because it allows them to actually continue their industry for a while and while all this is going on all this is rather you know uh, not threatening it's not destabilizing it allows the world to take a clean transition mm -hmm. because these new forms of energy they are coming you know mm -hmm. uh, we are exactly. going to be using the zero point uh, for most of our energy needs in the future so this is more about a transition technology the right. brilliance behind it is that it teaches the most important principles in the universe that can be utilized for any other technology and this is essentially the power of two opposing vortexes and what this creates this is how we form 
a zero point. This is how we get a net gain in energy that uh, doesn't necessarily go against the laws of conservation of energy. It's just that we are surrounded by energy exactly. everywhere. Everything's exactly. an AC perturbation, whether it's matter or plasma or whatever. It can all be harnessed as energy. And we have unlimited energy around us. So this principle of the two opposing vortexes, this is the heart of the thunderstorm generator. You've got mm -hmm. these two spheres where colliding the hot, dry exhaust gas and the cold, moist mm -hmm. water vapors. And it's incredibly simple. Yeah. People can learn and apply that to other technologies, which is why it's not just about this invention. This has got to be the first stage. This is the transition for the world. It's a chance for everyone to get on with it without anyone being thrown out. Mm -hmm. However, the principles behind it are going to, they're going to allow continuous development over the next decades to come. It's a, such a great picture because you picture everybody still driving their, you know, diesel cars and their, their whatever, their, you know, combustion engine cars to work. Yeah. While all of this other stuff is going on, you know, to, exactly. to, to kind of put the next, the next thing in front of them. So fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Such a pleasure to talk to you. I to, and you say you're not the best person. I, I think you probably, for me, you are the most understandable in a way. And then, of course, we're going to get to Sheila's uh, demonstration of the harmonics that you just spoke about. Yeah, yeah. But you have a real way of, of condensing it all and communicating. And I think it's super useful. Thank right you. And, and that's, that's essentially my role is mm -hmm. I'm trying to simplify this, make it Mm -hmm. understandable to the regular people you know my brother's a bricklayer and I kind of use his and him as an example you know if we can teach <laughs> this to the tradespeople, to the engineers to the you know the guys on the shop floor yeah creating tools and that's how this is going to happen you know it's it's not always and we need to teach academia as well because they don't understand structured plasma for the most part guys like Bob Green here are going to be yeah. a force to behold in that area but my particular role in this has been to try and explain it to laymen, explain it to people who have never heard these ideas before and yeah. just make it as simple as possible. And who knows, then they'll come up with their own inventions as they're yeah. doing their own jobs. Yeah, and, and, and that's what this is, you know, it's like mm -hmm. the discovery of electromagnetism or mm -hmm. electricity. It's so broad Basically. and that's why it's so hard for so many people to get their, their heads around it. It has, the applications are so profound and so broad that there is a lot <laughs> A lot to learn here and it's going to take the whole world really coming on board yeah to understand what this is and make that next leap you know we didn't have electricity we didn't have the combustion engine at some point and then these things got integrated and we had cars generators you know yeah <laughs> planes flying through the sky all of a sudden this is what we can expect within the next few decades is endless development but for now the thunderstorm generator and a clean transition that doesn't destabilize the world, doesn't cause any more war. Yes. Doesn't exactly. put anyone no out, wars. allows them to use what they already have. Brilliant, brilliant. Sounds like a brand new world is around the corner. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jordan. Very fascinating. It's been a pleasure. Thank yes. you. Yes, thank you.